mating and courtship rituals. One of the strangest things that Amish men assuredly do not want you to know is the strange ritual known as bed courtship. The practice originated hundreds of years ago in either the British Isles or the Netherlands, and from there it became popular in colonial America and was then adopted by the Old Order Amish. Bed courtship is also known as bundling or tarrying. The practice involves a teenage boy going to the house of the girl he's romantically interested in, with the two lying on her bed fully clothed, but without touching. Sometimes both are wrapped up in heavy blankets, and often the girl will wear some kind of chastity belt. Bundling was essential. With Instacart, you can choose from hundreds of retailers to get your favorite snacks, takis, or sporty stuff. Okay. And even that fresh actually conceived as a way for a boy and girl to talk with and get to know each other without any form of intimacy happening. There's a biblical basis for it too, with Boaz and Ruth reportedly sleeping together in a grain storage room all night while remaining chast. Also, buggy rides form a good part of Amish dating rituals. Romantic interest is signified by a boy offering a girl a ride home, and dates between the two will largely consist of buggy rides from place to place to see the sights and smell the air. And should they get married, the new bride and groom have to live with the family of the girl for the next few months before moving into their own house, and that must be awkward. Social media means a crazier Rumspringer. We have already mentioned Rumspringer and told you that it's a wild time in the life of many Amish youth. But there is one thing that is even wilder than Rumspringer, and that is Rumspringer with social media added into the mix. Look, let's face facts. All teens the world over are pretty similar. They indulge in adult-like behavior, but with a child's disregard for consequences and responsibility. Being a teen is awesome. But whereas in the pre-social media world, teens grew up only knowing the teens in their immediate environments, social media is allowing the teenage condition to be shared globally. And for Amish teens, emerging from the restricted world of no technology and few freedoms into the crazy wild west booze, drugs and social media, well, what do you expect to happen? When some of these teens figure out that they can go binge drinking, have a wild time, and that they can then share it with other teens on social media, it becomes something like a challenge with one group seeing if they can outdo another. Social media has put Rum Springer on steroids. They are becoming inbred. For going modern conveniences for the most part and doing a lot of work with their hands out in the open have resulted in the Amish being mostly healthier than the general populace and having lower rates of obesity and other diseases of modern life. But they are becoming inbred to an increasing degree. Currently, the Amish have a higher rate of genetic disorders than the general population. These disorders include Angelman syndrome, Tay-Sachs disease, metabolic disorders and dwarfism as well as some very rare disorders that have yet to be adequately studied and named. See, nearly every Amish in the world is descended from a few hundred founders, and they do not believe in marrying outsiders. This means they are more likely to wed their relatives, and that makes for poor genetic diversity. Also, the Amish do not perform genetic tests before marriage that would identify genetic issues between intending couples, and do not believe in testing unborn children to identify potential genetic problems. They accept any medical issues that might arise from inbreeding as being God's will, and that is considerably less than an ideal take. Amish men focus on manual trades. The Amish take pride in working with their hands, and from time immemorial have focused on manual trades. Making money is not the aim, with the focus being on earning enough to provide for the family and support the community. The focus on manual trade among the Amish is not all that surprising, since nearly all quit formal education in the 8th grade. From then on, they are immersed in various hands-on experiences in farms, mechanical workshops, and the like owned by members of the community. A number of Amish men also raise livestock, manage produce stands and stores, and craft a variety of materials for sale. Amish men prefer to be self-employed, tend to be trustworthy employees, and go into manual trades as a matter of course. The shameful thing they are hiding. Amish men have a horrible secret, and they are doing everything possible to keep hidden from the world, and that is the high rate of sexual abuse happening within the Amish community. Such abuse is rarely acknowledged, and the punishment given to the abusers is little more than slight taps on the wrist that do not dissuade them and others like them. 
Widespread sexual abuse in Amish communities is an open secret, though everyone likes to pretend otherwise. The abuse is aided by the fact that only very light punishment from the community awaits the abuser, public shunning for six weeks, after which the matter is regarded as resolved and forgotten. Sexual abuse is also very rarely brought to the attention of law enforcement personnel, with the victims facing public shaming, mockery and threats of expulsion if they dare speak out about their experiences. Some of the victims who do speak out are branded as mentally ill and taken to typically unlicensed facilities where they are shot full of drugs while others are ostracized. So, when next you read a charming story about the Amish, do remember that all is not as it seems, with the sexual abuse of women being a widespread and little reported phenomenon among such straight-laced fellows. Welcome back. There's a Hello. Hello, ninety eight five eight eight five eight eight one. Always that one entitled friend, isn't there? Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she can't stay at mine? I, 28 female, own a digital travel magazine and make my money by writing about interesting destinations around the world. I started this business three years ago and I'm now making quite a bit of money, close to six figures, but not quite there. My friend Laura told me my business idea is stupid and I should just get a job like everybody else. Sorry, get a job own a business. Now, I'm no influencer and I don't post dressy pictures on Instagram or anything like that. I just write good, honest text about destinations. Good travel guides that people love. When she heard how much money I'm making from my stupid job, she decided to change strategies. Oh, that old ticket, I see. About one year ago, Laura decided to also create her own travel magazine. Shut up! No! When they copy you, oh my god! I have a theory. Entitled friends copy you because they want to steal your life. And of course, they're low-key jealous. High-key jealous. And she basically copied every single article. She reworded a lot of stuff, but ultimately you can even see the structure of the article being the same. Even the affiliates I'm using, the wording, and the call to action at her main page. Buddy! I hate it when they mirror you. It's so, it's so creepy. This has happened, like, at least five times in my life, and it's so painful. Like, it's just so awful. And you want to be supportive because you're their friend, but after a certain point, it starts to get a little bit too similar. That's pretty deflating, but I never told her anything about this because I didn't want to discourage her. 
And the worst part is, is it's like they think it's easy, you know? Like, that's the most offensive thing. When they want to copy you because they think it's, like, an easy thing for them. If you're doing it, then they can do it. Well, it can't be that hard, can it? Yes, it is. It is. Everything is hard. Like, anything worth doing is really, really hard. Hi, guys. Okay, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to give a huge shout-out to my mom, Claudia Catania, because she just published her first novel. It's called The Canada Project, and it's now available at all major book retailers. So if you didn't know this, my mom worked as a journalist for more than 40 years. She's won a ton of writing awards here in Canada. She's retired.